And we are back with our first episode of Trash Talk with the New Providence Ecology Park with our esteemed guest, Mr. Nicholas Fox. Yo. Now, Mr. Fox, let's talk about setting up our compost, yeah. indoor composting, kitchen composting. Okay. Um, so I've seen online where they have these compost containers, like these really nicely designed yeah. I know exactly compost containers about. online that you could buy for a couple hundred dollars, mm -hmm. if that's your thing, Yeah. based on where you are. Of course, we want to inspire and encourage persons to get into composting, but um, seeing that online, like they've taken the, they up in the ante on composting, how, how did you feel? So, I mean, it was really cool to see. Uh, when I, even when I used to like travel mm -hmm. and you see that they have composting integrated so well into their society, it's, it's amazing. But you don't even need all of that to get started. I mean, that's for more like the trendsetters. Like right. if you want to say, oh, I only compost because it looks cool. And the interior but, designers. Yeah. But if you don't care about all of that, mm -hmm. you could have your five gallon bucket or whatever closed environment to store your compost in, but you're not necessarily making compost right in your kitchen. Um, for a few reasons. Okay. One, you need life in your compost. So every time you open up your compost and that food waste starts to break down and smell, everything that has a nose is going to come to it and say, hey, I want to I wanna live here. I want to live in this to accept, accept us, of course, because oh, you know okay. it can smell bad. Okay. But that, those pests that we talk about, you don't want those in your home. Also, compost can only really happen at a certain size if you want it to happen efficiently. Okay. So if you have a compost, if you have like a normal garbage bin, even a 55 gallon garbage bin will not make a proper compost. It will, it'll take much longer because it doesn't have the size to retain the heat or the moisture in okay. that compost. So right now these bins are only for storing compost in your house to get them to a compost facility like such as myself. Okay. Um, because we don't have, right now, we don't have the proper systems in line for everybody in this country. For to composting. Be, yeah, to be composting. So talk to them. Talk okay. to them and tell them what the nation needs. We need Go. to have composting on a national level. A national level. Because food waste is not garbage. Food waste is a very important resource. We import over, what, over a million pounds of food a year or something like that. I can't remember the number right now. Right, but it, it's on right though. We are not, this is not garbage. This is something that we import and it has multiple uses. Just because it leaves your kitchen in a garbage bag and it goes to the New Providence Ecology Park. Right. Doesn't mean that it's garbage. Compost has so much value to our soils. Compost has so much value to our soils and to our our agriculture industry which will bolster all of our other industries so that's why i think we need composting on a national level uh do you remember that saying clean green pristine, pristine it starts with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we definitely need to have a cleaner greener bahamas and composting is one of those is one of the first steps or if not the first step to getting them <laughs> So um, let's go back to uh, building our own indoor or kitchen compost. Yeah. What are some containers or the requirements needed to get started with that? So, or what do you recommend? I recommend the trusty, faithful five gallon bucket. Of course. With this closed top. Mm -hmm. It's a good size, fits most family homes, especially from one to two, four to six. The amount of food waste you produce, especially our compostable food waste, right. that can fit it all in a for a reasonable about a reasonable amount of time for someone such as myself or any other composting facilities to come and pick it up without it smelling bad. You also need to make sure that it's not too far away or too big to obstruct things in your kitchen. Right. You need your kitchen scraps, of course. You need your, some of your household items. Let's say you had a cotton shirt that you used to clean your car with. Right, so, your rag. Your rag. You Everybody know? got a rag. And so it's cotton. It don't have no car oil on it. It don't have no soap in it. It's just a rag. You could compost that because it's cotton, wool, or oh, silk. Oh, you could compost yeah. clothes. Not all clothes. Not all clothes. Only cotton, 
wool or silk, none of the elastics not, inside not of it. Not the twins, not Polly and Esther. <laughs> not them. No, not them. Don't, don't compose your Polly and yeah. Esther. Uh, what else can you compost? Your newspaper, your toilet tissue rolls, but you have to make sure your cereal box and your pizza box, those are two different types of cardboard that we can't, one can compost and one can't compost. Let me try to guess. So pizza, bo pizza box and, and cereal box. Mm -hmm. The pizza box feel like that's, that's cardboard. Yeah. That's like strong cardboard. Yeah. The, the, the cereal box might have something on it. I assume that makes it on Compostable? Correct. You know that... Uh, so I write? You write. There we go. You're getting somewhere with the composting. Okay. Your cereal box and even some of these other um, packagings have like a waxy film on the outside. Right. And that's petroleum based and that does not break down well in the compost. That is a very, very, very volatile thing that will mess up your compost. Yikes. So you don't want to be putting your, your waxy paper or cardboard in that compost bin. Okay, okay. So for those who want to start composting or feel like they want to contribute to the environment and to a cleaner, greener Bahamas. Mm -hmm. um, first question, is it easy or is it hard to get into composting? It's easy for me because- The compost king. It's passion, it was a very, mm -hmm. I was very passionate about it. But I mean, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of hard work and it's a, something that you have to watch Frequently, you have to dedicate a lot of time to a proper compost because you can let it sit, but then that takes time, and then it starts to smell, and then you'll run into things like pests starting to live in your mm -hmm. compost. It gets it get it gets really warm, and you know things like rats. So I assume if they live in your compost, you won't have it sealed properly. Well, that's oh, I started talking about the outside compost, your indoor compost. Right. If you're storing it. That's easy because you just have to build that habit. Let's, that's why they have these very nice fancy bins mm -hmm. to have start building that habit to make composting fun and cool. But you have to start building that habit. Say, oh, I just started baking a cake and I have these eggshells. Let me put it in the compost. Right. I just dropped some lettuce on the floor. Let me compost it. That's, you have to have that bin in a place that's always easy to see mm -hmm. or, and it's easily accessible. So that's why I think the five gallon bucket is such a great composting storage device right because when you open it up drop it in and close it and that's it you don't have to worry about doing all type of stuff to open these other containers you know so i think it's easy to start storing your compost but creating your own soil or your own compost is a very different process and it it would be difficult for us or for the average person so basically with the indoor composting, it is possible, but it won't give you the results that you're actually looking for. Correct. Correct? So indoor composting is just a collection of compostable foods yes. and items to go on the outside compost. To get the actual results that you want. Yes. For your soil and yeah. Your, so your, you to you like I said before, you need the life, you need the proper oxygen, you need the proper water and and you won't get those things inside. On the inside. And you won't have the space, like the amount of food waste that you need or food scraps that you need to produce a compost is a lot. It's, a it's, lot. it's about like four to five hundred pounds okay. of, of compostable waste to get a proper compost going. So hold that thought. Yeah. We've just covered indoor composting. So stay tuned to Trash Talk because when we come back, we're going outside. <laughs> <laughs>